Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today. Today we have a session about security information and event management, SIM, and we will learn about Azure Cinetil. My name is Hassan Mohsine, I'm the Program Manager for Microsoft Reactor in Abu Dhabi. Microsoft Reactors are hubs for founders and developers to meet, learn, and connect to local peers, as well as industry-leading ideas and technology from Microsoft partners and the open source community. It's also home to the Microsoft for Startups program. With a diverse mix of fans on workshops, expert panels, and community events, there is something for everyone. Check out our calendar of events on meetup.com and join our coming sessions. Speaker today is Hisham Saad. Hisham is a senior regional cybersecurity technical specialist at Microsoft, focusing on SOC operations, threat management, DFIR, advanced analytics, and SIM management, with more than 13 years of IT and cybersecurity experience. So during the session, keep the Q&A tab open. It's on the right side of your screen. I will be sharing some resources and you can share with us your questions relating to today's session. Uh, we'll have uh, regular stops to answer your questions and uh, I don't want to take long in the introduction. I want to leave it and hand over the mic to our speaker to start today's session. We're so excited to have you, Hisham. Thank you for taking the time to share your experience with our community. Thanks so much, Hassam. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, one of the most exciting, we guess, reactor sessions. Uh, allow me to share my screen. And then we're going to kick started directly. All right, so I think that I'm sharing my screen. If you don't mind, Hassam, can we confirm it, please? It's all good now, yeah. Thanks so much, Hassam. So a uh, quick introduction. So my name is Hisham. I'm part from the cybersecurity uh, solutions team in Microsoft covering Europe and Middle East and Africa. Uh, so today we're going to go into details and explore more into Microsoft Azure Sentinel solution. What is Sentinel? What are the main capabilities? How Sentinel can help you as an organization in order to improve your security operations center team in terms of effectiveness and responsiveness? But before going into details about how Microsoft Azure Sentinel and what is exactly Sentinel, how it works, what are the main capabilities and features, and most importantly, how we'll be able to leverage such kind of a platform or a solution to improve your SOC operations for your analyst, your IR team, and how to improve your mean time to respond and even to effectives. So before going into details, it's really important to understand what are the main traditional SOC challenges. And these are some of the challenges that we're hearing from multiple of our couple of enterprise organizations and customers dealing directly with us. So one of the key challenges which is happening there is high volume of noisy alerts. And what does it mean by high volume of noisy alerts? Uh, in your SOC system, you might have your own security information event management. You might have a solution that's starting to collect and aggregate logs and data coming from a different data systems or data source. So imagine the time that might be spent by your analyst, your SOC team to investigate or to look into high volumes in terms of noisy alerts or what we're calling signals or encounters. This might take a lot of time and pretty much you might have a percentage of FPs or false positives. And eventually what will happen, you're going to waste your analyst time to just spend to investigate or doing a forensic analysis in a couple of alerts or even incidents or cases that your solution might generate it. And it might be kind of a noisy. It means that it's not a real threat and it's worth not to spend time. One of the key points as well in terms of challenges that we are getting from a SOC organizations is the disconnected products. What does it mean? Uh, pretty much organizations, they might have the best of pre or even the suite in terms of different products. This can be related to security. This can be related to infrastructure, network, identity, etc. An organization might have a different secured solution, one related to their endpoint, another one for their email security gateway. A third one even for their identity, for a privileges identity and access management. Another one for queuing system, third solutions for orchestrator in terms of doing orchestrations and sort capability, and so forth. The pro problem and issue happening there is there is a completely disconnected. If even if you are bringing the logs coming from all of these data sources or data points to your existing SIM solution, 
in terms of aggregating and maybe doing a correlations based on rules or use cases from your end, it's really difficult because to just have an automated correlation for all of the events and signals coming from these tools. Lake of automation, that's another layer. We might have all of the data, all of the information connecting to your existing SIM in your SOC, but the challenge is how we'll be able to automate an automation here, how to be able to take an action and respond that can be configured using a set of workflows or a run box. And how we'll be able to automate and take a response in a bi-directional. It's not just a kind of one way targeting a specific data system. Sophisticating of threats. We are seeing a lot of sophisticated attacks, the modern kill threat chain, um, uh, the entire attack story covering different workloads into your infrastructure. It's not necessarily that's coming from the cloud or even if your on-prem system, it touched pretty much most of the workloads into your parameters of your network. Supply chains attacks in terms of skills, how you'll be able to ensure that your analyst, your SOC team and administrator, even an architect is always up to date and they do have the skills to respond and remediate to specific alerts or even incidents. Rising infrastructure cost and definitely for deployment and, and maintenance. So pretty much what you are seeing here quickly in the slide, we are sharing that what other big enterprise organization we are dealing with sharing with us what are the main traditional soft challenges they might face. But the point is, how will we be able to tackle such kind of a challenges? How will we be able to improve SOC team, analyst time, how to respond quickly, how to have a high fidelity alerts and incidents, not based on a noisy alerts, and uh, accordingly how you will improve and reduce your FPs, your false positive rates. And hence we invented what we're calling Microsoft Azure Sentinel, which is a complete cloud native security information event management platform running on the cloud. Pretty much running and hosted under Azure platform for Microsoft. But this is not only a SIM, and it doesn't mean if it's already cloud native born on the cloud, it's only covering cloud sources. It's covering any kind of a data or any kind of a data source or data set. So Azure Sentinel is mainly designed to doing analytics and correlation. We're going to explore more into details in the coming slide for your cloud and even for your on-premise assets and environments. And that's really important point to know because if you do have a multiple on-prem data sources, firewalls, appliances, networks, switchers, uh, gateways, energies, application gateways, you will be able to ingest data and flow coming from this specific on-prem data system to your Sentinel. And hence, we're going to explore how you will be able to do in correlation, how to run analytics, how to do in hunting detections and remediation to respond. So that's fine. Let's have a quick overview about what are the main modules or phases that's considered to be a set of built-in modules into your Microsoft Azure Sentinel. And remember, as we said, it's an end-to-end -end solution for your security operations. So there are four main modules inside your Azure Sentinel. The first one, what we're calling the collection phase, and we're going to take them one by one, and we're going to explore all of the main phases. And at the end, we're going to give you like a complete end-to-end -end demo, or even we might have multiple demos after each set of module. So the first one, how we'll be able to collect, so pretty much, I do have multiple data sources or data set. These set of data sources, they are maybe coming from a cloud providers, from Microsoft, from non-Microsoft, from an Azure, Microsoft 365, from an AWS, from an Oracle, from Google, it doesn't matter. Or even coming from an on-prem appliances, assets, virtual machines, workstations, servers, appliances, uh, firewalls, switchers, routers, etc. The key point is, we expect to have a set of connectors and these data connectors or collectors or a custom one will help us to collect the logs and data from our target or concerned data system. And once we connect it, this means that we do have a visibility. We do have the raw data or logs coming from the system into our SIM solution. Next, what we're going to do is to doing a detection phase. And detections is pretty much is running on a two main categories. The first one we're calling analytics. I don't want just to bring data and logs coming from data system and storing on a kind of a database. 
Most importantly, I need to do analytics and run a set of machine learnings and AI module, what we're calling the fusion model into all of these data that's coming from data sets. It doesn't matter it's coming from a Microsoft secure solution as a first party or a third party solution or a data system or appliances from any vendor. The point is how the solution running a set of machine learnings and this machine learning modules that mainly classified into different layers will be able to analyze and correlate events and even alerts and telemetry coming from this data that's stored here in order to detect there is anomaly or suspicious behavior or even create an incident to you for further investigation. Or you know what? I need as a SOC team, as an analyst, to build my own analytics rule. I need to build my own use case. And hence, how the solution as a center will offer us a way to build our own use cases. And these use cases, they are mainly targeting specific data sources or a system. Next stage of what's happening under detection is doing a hunting. Because as a SOC, as an analyst on IR team, we need to do some forensic activities. Investigations in terms of hunting, in terms of being proactive, I'm investigating one of the incidents that might be showing up into my Sentinel. And at the same time, what I need to do, I need to run or stream a set of hunting queries that's running on the background. And this set of a live hunting stream queries will be able to investigate further data set. Because eventually as an analyst, I wanted to connect the dots and see exactly how this specific suspicious alert or an incident that's showing in my system into my SIM as an Azure Sentinel, it comes to the picture. And if there is any kind of aggregation or explicit correlation need to be done with other further data sets. And going to the point of the investigation phase, which is mean that analyst is going to a specific incident, he would like to investigate. We're gonna show, go into details and show you live how it works. Last but not least, which is pretty much important. I'm collecting the data, I have the visibility into my environment. I'm leveraging the machine learning and analytics that's running out of the box using profiles, using a user entity and behavior analytics UBE module that's packed by ML and AI directly from a Microsoft Threat Intelligence. I'm be able to doing a hunting, I'm be able to doing further investigation and forensic. I'm doing investigation into incidents that's coming to my incident late. But most importantly, we will be able to do a respond or to take an action. And a respond, it can be done in two ways. It can be running on an automation piece, or it can be run definitely in terms of a manual. I'm an analyst, I'm going to a specific incident alert. I would like to automate it, take an action manually. Or I'm creating a set of workflows or what we're calling playbooks. We'll go into details in the coming slide. And these set of automations or a playbooks, it's running a set of workflow. And these workflows that have a set of conditions based on steps. And every single condition will be able to define what is the trigger, what is the action that have to be taken. And remember, there is a set of a built-in SOAR capability security orchestration and automated incident response, which is one of the key capabilities as an out of the box capabilities for Azure Sentinel. You have a built in SOAR layer. You have a built in threat intelligence hub platform. You do have a built in analytics, machine learning and AI and user entity behavior analytics for your entities and profiles. And more and more, we're gonna explore it and show with you in the coming slides. So fine. So what's happening right now? We're just giving you an overview when exploring what is Azure Sentinel, what are the main modules and phases that we already have. And for us as a security the SOC team, how we'll be able to cover every single stage. So before going to covering every single stage, it's really important to know that, as we said, Azure Sentinel, it can bring and ingest and correlate data coming from any data source, on-prem, hybrid, or a cloud, it doesn't matter. And as you can see here is an just a high level example and we'll go into details shortly. Here's my environment, even my on-prem, I'm using an on-prem assets and I'm using even in cloud providers or vendors. 
I need to bring and stream all of this data. So I'd like to ingress and ingest all of these data sources and logs stream it to Azure Sentinel. And remember that Azure Sentinel, since it's born on the cloud, it's purely based and running on top of Microsoft Azure, which means that, or would like to speak technically specifically, it's running on what we're calling the Log Analytics Workspace. If you're familiar with Microsoft Azure, if you're familiar about the Log Analytics Workspaces, resource groups, container subscriptions, you pretty much know about this one. Definitely will not be able to cover the basics and fundamentals. We're going to focus right now into Azure Sentinel as a platform or solution. Fine. So if we'd like to have a high level design architecture, and that's a referenced one from Managed Asset Sentinel, what are the main capabilities or what's happening behind the scene? And that's just a high level architecture view about what Sentinel, how the design for it. So as you can see that here is the main middle, here's your main tier, your main portal, your main tenant as an Azure portal. And under your tenant, you have a log analytics workspace and this log analytics workspace, it have your Sentinel instance, which means the solution is mainly designed to be scaled. And that's part from the scalability. So if you are looking in your organization into a data retention, because any organization looking from a SOC perspective for a SIM, the main concern or main point that what are the data retention speeds that you have in your SIM solution? Because our compliance or other team, they need even to archive and audit the data, the logs coming from our data system based. It can be incidents, can be raw data, can be alerts, etc., for compliance or an audit purpose. And that's one of the key reasons that we built it on top of an Azure. Why? Because the scalability piece is really important for such kind of an aspects. Plus, the extension and leveraging of these specific security modules or components that we're going to discuss it in details in the coming slides. The whole objective and idea from this high level architecture is any kind of first party or third party data source coming from a cloud, any kind of a threat intelligence feeds indicators coming from a third party built grown in house or even getting as a subscription feeds or even you built your own Docker or a container as a grown one and starting to build your own indicators with a different data types. IPs is hashes, hashes it can be chat 056, 512, MD5, etc. IPs, URLs, combination between all of these data types as a strategic or a tactical feeds. Integration with any system. I might have my ticketing or queuing system. I might have a service now, Jira, Remedy, Avanti, etc. Or even a third party. I might have another sore layer. IPM resilience or other third party with the sore capability engine inside Sentinel, which is what we are calling play box and automation. We're going to explore it in details. You will be able to integrate in a two direction with such kind of a system, which is can be a third party or any kind of a system there. In addition to the cloud, in addition to the on-premise assets on appliances, firewall, network security appliances, WAN network settings, collections, VMs, machine information security tools, uh, networks, appliances, you will be able to get the logs and data from all of these aspects or data points. And hence, you will be able to doing your own analysis, the usage, investigations, and leveraging all of these features into your SIM. All right. So let's get started right now on going into details and explore more about all of the main phases. Remember, collections, how to collect the data coming from any source. Second, how we'll be able to doing a set of analysis, detection, investigation from an incident, how to automate and take an action with a sword layer. So let's get started with the collection phase. And you know what? Once we finish module by module, it's really important to switch to the demo. I don't want to give you like a one end to end demo. We can do it as well, but I wanted to make it much more fruitful to you. So you'll be able to visually map what we are sharing on the slide in a real life environment. So collections of data, as we said, I have my environment. I might use in cloud resources, Microsoft, non Microsoft, Azure, Microsoft 365 from Microsoft can be an Amazon one, AWS, S3, CloudTrail, etc. Can be using like in a Google or even an Oracle. It doesn't matter. Or any kind of another cloud provider based on integration. Or an on-prem assets and appliances. I need to bring which kind of a data, and that's a really important piece here. Are we focusing on a security logs? 
Are we focusing on analytics, operational system application inside logs, diagnostics activities, or threat intelligence feeds in terms of logs? So the key point, it's up to you as a SOC team. You just need to define what kind of data or logs that we need to ingest it from which data source. And I'm going to show with you how we'll be easily bring this data from this system and store it into your log analytics workspace, which is, as we said, the back end the storage for your Azure Sentinel platform. So. If I'd like to go one level down into the architecture point of view, because we said he said he sham that will be able to bring data from on prem assets or even machines, not necessarily to be stored on Azure as a Microsoft. It can be stored in AWS, it can be stored on prem, can be stored part of your server based on your domain structure, etc. So let's show with you how it works. And we do support multiple options or even scenarios to bring such kind of a data. So let's assume that I do have a set of a servers. It can be in a Linux space with different distros, Red Hat, Oponto, Suze, Oracle, Unix, etc. Or it might be like a Windows servers or even a clients or even a Mac. So we do have a set of endpoints. This set of endpoints, let's assume they're already on in our on-prem environment, apart from our managed assets in our network. Such kind of a case, if I'd like to bring logs and data, let's say security events, logs, specific uh, kernel authentication, syslogs, set for Mac coming from all of this data. How would be able to bring it to Sentinel? You have multiple options. You can either go directly and install what we're calling the log analytics agents or the former name, the MMA Microsoft monitoring agent. This specific log analytics agent, it's actually configured to some called workspace ID and key, which means you do have a unique identifier for your Azure Sentinel workspace. So you will install the log analytics agent into this specific servers or workstations or endpoint. It will automatically starting to collect and forwarding the log directly to using the TLS to your Azure Sentinel workspace. Or I might have a specific requirement because I do not have a direct internet connections and some restrictions in terms of ports to expose any data to the cloud and we do have an on-prem asset. So what is the solution? It's easy. You will install in your environment, in your server, a collector proxy, which is pretty much another virtual machine. It can be stored on-prem, it can be stored into your Azure tenant, it doesn't matter. And this specific collector proxy as a VMs, what it will do, it will actually acting as a forward proxy. So you will be able to configure the agent here in your assets, in your machines, and this will take the IP address as a static one coming from the collector proxy. And here we'll be able to install collector and forwarding for SIF and syslog in terms of non-Windows, which means that any kind of an appliance or asset coming from this specific format, SIF, syslog, Windows event forwarding in terms of servers of Windows or clients, it will collect the logs and directly sending using a specific port to Azure Sentinel. And we're going to speak more into technical details later on how it works. Show me the protocol. What are the main port? Do we need to do a TCP dump? What are the main channeling of this one on the 5.4 and 2522 to 6 ports, etc.? Or I might be an organization that in my SOC were using Logstash. And if you're familiar with Logstash, it's pretty much one of the plugins that most of the SOC teams are using to ingest logs coming from multiple or any different data sources using TCP, UDP, or even TLS for syslog or even a SIF from any data source on-prem on appliances or cloud and using a specific parser. Azure Sentinel do support external plugin and actually have an external plugin specifically for log stash. So you actually can keep the same architectures that you're having right now and you just need to integrate with Sentinel order to bring your data coming using log stash external plugin. That's another option. Or you know what? I don't want to use such kind of architecture. I do have a service to service, which is means that there are a set of ready data connectors into my Sentinel solution for first party, third party data sources, which is automatically designed by Microsoft integrated with these vendors in order to make it a seamless integration. Just a few clicks with the specific permissions and roles, you will be able to bring data coming from external or first party data sources how it works behind the scene using the rest of APIs for this service to service connection. Or you know what? 
I'm looking at the Sentinel dashboard, and you're saying there are a set of out of the box data connectors there. I didn't find my data connector, or even we didn't find it on what we're calling the Azure Sentinel grand list, which is a pure list that having multiples of multiples, hundreds of data sources, you can check it out. If we didn't find it there, it's not an issue because you can build your own custom connector very easily. We'll show it to you kind of a demo, uh, hopefully by the session, how to build even a custom connector or a custom collector for a data for any data source not mentioned here on out of the box to bring it to center. So the message is you will be able to bring data from any data source on prem cloud to your same solution. And here's a slide we're going to share with you later on about it. So giving you reference link about white papers, about blog posts that we wrote it. How about to build the custom connector? Step by step guide about the agents collecting the data. What are the main data sources? What is a grand list that have a lot of data sources, first party, third party, with a clear instruction, step by step, easy guide how to bring this data to center. But before we go into visibility and visualization, once we got the data, let me show you something here. I believe you'll still be able to see my screen. So what's happening? I went to portal.azure.com starting to look for my Azure Sentinel, and here is my main page. As you can see in my main page, what I'm seeing, I'm seeing there are different sections. Here is the general sections, threat management configurations. In the middle, you will see there is a nice graph telling you, hey, these are the main set of events or logs and alerts coming over time in a very interactive view from your data sources. Doesn't matter cloud, doesn't matter on-prem. What are the main recent incidents? Show me the set of data sources anomalies that has been detecting using what we're calling the fusion or analytics rule. Show me the potential malicious events, and you can zoom in and see exactly what's exactly happening, getting more details about the specific events. So if you look at the left side, we can see there is a one of the blade, which is called data connectors. If you click on the data connectors, what do we do expect? We expect to see an out of the box ready service to service connectors, which means you can explore with first part and third party. I need to bring data coming from an Azure Active Directory. Boom, click on the control, open connector page, and every single out of the box connector here in this list is giving you a description. What is the main vendor, Microsoft or a third party? What is actually the latest data that has been received? You can see most importantly the data types, which means any kind of a data or logs coming from any data source, first party or third party, is actually stored into a table. And this table have an entire scheme stored into the workspace of Sentinel. It's really important to know because SOC analysts or SOC team, sometimes they need to go and doing further correlation or aggregation for data. They need to write their own queries or custom logic. This custom logic into Sentinel is what we're calling the KQL, Coastal Query Language. A lot of online courses, free resources, materials that can help you how to master the KQL Coastal Query Language, which is the language we're using for analytics into Microsoft Secure Solutions, which is pretty much close to the SQL and the PowerShell. If you're familiar with such kind of platforms, you would be easily be able to master such kind of a language there. And if I click on just open connector page, I'm going to description clear instructions. What are the main prerequisites? What are the permissions that's required in order to enable such kind of connector? And what kind of data or logs you would like to bring it? And once you start to configure this out of the box connector, Sentinel giving you the next steps, which is, hey, there are a set of reports or visualization ready for use pre-built for you that having a lot of logic and reports that you can customize this kind of reports. We're going to speak about it. We're giving you sample queries and most importantly, we're giving you a set of use cases or what we're calling analytics rules or templates that are mainly designed by our mystic team, Microsoft Threat Intelligence Analysts and Researchers for every single connector that first party or third party with other data sources other than Microsoft that can help you to even build your own rules or detection. Fine. If I'm going back here to the data connectors, I'm seeing Amazon, Microsoft, non-Microsoft. I'm seeing third party like Barracuda, Checkpoint, Cisco, um, 
any kind of format, uh, DNS, CyberArk, uh, F5, networks, big IPs, force point, illusions, infobox, uh, semantic, pulse, proof, Sophos, security events, syslogs, TI, etc. on Trend Micro. So the message is, there are a bunch of an out-of-the-box connector which is already. But the question is, what will happen if I'm looking for a specific solution and this specific data system is not mentioned here as an out-of-the-box? It's not an issue. Remember the point, which is what are the main logs or format that you need to ingest it to your Sentinel? This specific solution is actually having a syslog format or might be like a Ceph, which is a common event format. It's not a problem. Go and configure it and we're providing for you an open universal connector that you will be able to bring such kind of formats or logs from any system to your Sentinel SIM solution. All right, so what's happened now is before going to the second phase, we managed to collect data and logs coming from any data source from a high level. And remember that every single data is stored into a table. So there is a set of a schema. This scheme is actually hosted into your Sentinel log analytics workspace, which is a back end for it. And as you can see in the middle, we do have multiple tables. This table related to first party, third party, any data source, the logs being ingested to your Sentinel solution. So for example, I ingested the Office 365. I need to bring the activity logs coming from Exchange, Microsoft Teams, as an example. So we enabled the connector, which called the Office Activity. And look what's happening. When I click on Run, just to showing you what's happening behind the scene, you will be able to see in the last 24 hours, or you can configure it, these are the set of logs and activity coming from your connector or your custom collector or connector there. Amazing. But what will happen if I configure it to other data sources or even configure it to get the logs from a machine, Linux, Windows, Mac, it doesn't matter. On-prem, hosted on Azure Cloud, it doesn't matter. So first thing we're going to see is the heartbeat of these devices. For the last 24 hours or last a few minutes or hours or days, you can do it. So look what's happening here. I'm seeing there are different machines, appliances, assets, Linux, Windows, it doesn't matter, coming from directly with the agent or the connection, the IP, the source details. So why we are sharing this one with you? Because it's really important to understand that you can go beyond their visual interface and you can even easily write your own logic using the cost query language. So if I'm going here and checking in terms of the heartbeat or even you know what, I wanted to see if there is any kind of connectors or data coming from a third party connectors, Palo Alto, Checkpoint, Paracuda, on-prem cloud, it doesn't matter. So as you can see here, I will be able to see, show me what are the main device vendor for the last 24 hours that we're collecting the logs. Hey, I'm seeing that we're getting data from Cisco, Fortinet, Ziskiller, Palo Alto. And that's a clear message how to technically understand and what are to understand the data based on the logs from any sources once you collect it. Let's go back to the slide and discuss the second phase. So first one is a collection and we showed you how it works, how to collect the data. Second stage is going to visibility. Fine, I got my data, I have it. How will be able to visualize it? Because people love to have visualization. SOC team, SOC analyst, head, CSUs, architects love to see a KPIs of a visual reports interactive, intuitive, and efficient to show them the correlations and the data coming into single pane of glass dashboard. And hence, Azure Sentinel comes with what we're calling workbooks. And workbooks is a concept of providing a set of interactive gallery of how to build a complex, advanced, and intuitive reports for your data, which is being collected and ingested into your Sentinel SIM. And remember, we're providing an out-of-the-box gallery. It means you do have an out-of-the-box template mainly designed by Microsoft for you, or maybe designed by our community, which is actually on the GitHub, which is just go to GitHub Azure Sentinel repo. You will find the Microsoft community there, a bunch of hundreds of queries, reports, detections, use cases, connectors, etc., being verified by Microsoft Threat Intelligence team before even publish it to the community. And more important to get an insight. But before going to the second phase, let us show to you what do you mean by workbooks or how to visualize it. So let's get back to our demo tenant. So fine, we collect the data. If you look at the left side, you're going to see there are some called workbooks. 
And workbooks, as we said, that is a term we're using for reports or visualization into Sentinel. And you can see there are a set of templates, which is a gallery for different solution, Microsoft, non-Microsoft, etc. And your own workbooks. So remember what you can do, you can clone or customize any built in workbook or report template. You can reuse it, you can edit it, you can customize it, you can build it from scratch, or even you can customize it for some specific requirements. So what you need to do, just to click on the template, you can view the template or save it. Once it's saved, it will be under your custom workbooks. So let me show you an example here about the Azure Active Directory audit. What I did, one of the connectors is I wanted to get the sign-in activities and audit. Who is axing my tenant in Azure? As an example, it can be third party data source. It doesn't matter. Remember, just bring the logs. Or I wanted to see who is accessing what. What are the main permissions and operations and access right? Why is there is a user, his role is just read only, and he managed to create something into my tenant, which is required an admin privileges or a contributor or an owner role. This looks suspicious or might be an account of a brute force. So what we did in terms of the connectors, hey, there is one of the Atlas box connector here, which is called the Azure Active Directory and Azure Activity. And once I click on Azure Active Directory and connect it, I'm seeing that the data will be stored into two tables, the sign-in logs and the audit logs. Fine. And when I go to the workbooks, and I want to see in one of the Atlas box report to give you the flavor and the glance about how it works. Let me go to the view saved workbooks and see how it looks like. And most importantly, how you will be able to build any custom report or requirement because the Sentinel comes with this specific module for workbook, which is what we're calling the limitless capabilities. So giving you what we're calling time range, so expect to have an out of the box ready visuals controls. You can use it, you can customize it, you can build your own logic. I wanted to have C. Show me all of the entire audit sign-in activities for every single user in my organization doing what? Based on the data. For the last seven days or four hours or 90 days or etc. or going to extend. And it's fully refreshable. So you do not need to build custom reports or even export a report on a day or another week or a monthly. It's up to date. So if you selected the time range for the last 14 days, I'm seeing here in a graph showing me the successful login, 2,000 user successful login. What are the field? What are the login there? Show me the counter in terms of activities. Show me the exact location and JUs and IPs for this user because you might have an impossible time travel, which is might generate like a kind of an alert part from your use case. Show me the entire application. So it's asking which applications in my tenant. Show me the entire audit, which permissions, which operation is it succeeded or failed and show me the indicators and why it's failed by changing the password. Show me if the full trail and audit activity for every single operation by which user, which permissions and the status for it and why it's failed you will be able to query and investigate and more more visual details. So the point here to show to you, this is just a sample of a built in workbook. Imagine you can just hit on edit and remember every single permissions and access right is based on an IM identity access management, which is can be configured by the Azure Sentinel admin to define which permissions, which role a specific user into your SOC team that is actually allowed to do such kind of an actions. So every single section you're showing here is actually a visual control and every single visual control you will be able to customize it. You will be able to edit it. You will be able to add something even from a scratch or from the beginning. That's how it is easy and powerful at the same time to build your interactive and even complex report. But the visualization here in Sentinel is not only relying on the workbooks. Remember the capability of using Microsoft Power BI. So the Power BI business intelligence is built in and embedded into the Azure Sentinel as well. So you can go to any kind of an query and you can remember you do have an option which is called export and export can export you even to an Excel sheet, CSV or even to a Power BI ready report. So you can even use the capability of the Power BI if you are familiar or using this specific solution or visualization into your environment that you can build interactive, more controls, 
using the Azure Sentinel data that you're having there. Out of the box integration, seamless integration from the data and what's happening behind the scene, we're creating what we're calling the Empower Query, which is the exported converted language, converting actually the KQL to adjacent to an XML to the Power BI M query language. All of that's happening behind the scene. All of that's happening during the conversion exporter process. All right, so we managed to get the data from anywhere, from any data source. We managed to even query the data. We managed to even to visualize and the data into reports. So pretty much if I go here showing you another example before going to the next module or phase, if I go to any kind of a third party or even a first part, so let's say and hit the Cisco one. I do have a Cisco, I'm getting security logs, what I'll be able to see. Going to the report, showing your flavor of a third party as well, doesn't matter. You have the data. Once you make sure you get the data, data will be in correlated. Analytics will happening out of the box. You will build your own rules, use cases. You will build your own reports. And then what you're going to see, hey, I'm seeing, show me the events, the teardowns, the denied built incomings from the activities of the Cisco SA. Show me the volume and show me entire trends, what's happening in my system, what is the low, medium, high severity, and show me the entire full details. Show me the log severity, which action has been taken. Show me the IP, the source and destination port on IP, the entire message coming from Cisco, which protocol using TCP or UDP or TLS and further details for investigation. All of that in a very simple click. What you need to do, just make sure the data is already there, being correlated, just creating your own report or reuse one of the built-in reports. Fine. So we show it to you, explore it, how to visualize the data using the workbook. But what's next and it's really important to the SOC team, which is we're using on our daily basis, is how to analytics. There are a built-in use cases ready and designed by our threat intelligence mystic team into Sentinel. You can create at any time your own custom use case because the concept of a SOC or a SIM is how we'll build our own use cases because we do have a requirement. So Azure Sentinel, it comes with an out of the box use cases. And remember some of the use cases is backed by an ML. And here's what we're calling the fusion model that I explained at the beginning, which is mainly designed based on a Microsoft intelligence to actually correlate the data that might be coming to your system or you are actually ingesting and starting to do detections and correlations and anomaly hunting, which is can save a lot of time and this is mainly designed to detect high fidelities alerts and incidents with low volume in terms of signals or even noisy alerts. So let's have a look in terms of the analytics. If I go to the analytics, going back to my demo environment, on the left side, I'm seeing there's something called analytics rules. If you click on the rule templates, every single module in Sentinel were coming with an out of the box template or a gallery for you. So here is the rule templates and here is the active rules that has been enabled. Most importantly, to look at the rule type and it's showing you there are some being scheduled. It means created custom use cases by the SOC team and some things related to Microsoft correlation and intelligence AI and machine learning and something related to some security. So let me show to you the ML and Fusion, which are enabled by default once you're starting to activate Azure Sentinel in your environment. So look at the beauty here. Fusion is mainly the correlation that's mainly designed. And remember the mapping of the incident in Sentinel is mapping to metric attack in terms of the TTP or tactics. So the MITRE or the metric tactics technique for the kill chain is mapped into Azure Sentinel, which is really important to know as well and to understand. So you can see that this one is enabled by default as well as the machine learning modules. Why we're enabling such kind of out of box because this will give you, and this related to Microsoft, non-Microsoft data system as well. And this will save a lot of time. Doesn't require to put the rules from your end. It will do the analysis, the automations and correlation and starting to detect high fidelity alerts and incidents for you. But if I'm gonna back here and select or and even scheduled, it means that I need to create my own use case. Remember, you can reuse any of the built-in template, for example, one of the example here related to Microsoft is about like an office tempering. I have my Office 365. I wanted to see if someone is doing a tempering and evading for Office 365 policy use or no. Every single rule, you will see description. What are the main data that this specific rule is ingesting or collating? What is the tactic based on a metro or a mitre attack? Here is a persistence and evasion. 
what is the exact logic and query running and the frequency for it. Remember, at any time, you can customize any rule or build any new rule from scratch. So if I click on create rule, there are four simple stages. Name, tactic, severity, enable, and yes or no. Next, what's my logic? And this logic is based on the cost of query language that I'm showing to you how it's easy to use it. And a lot of courses from Microsoft, from third party, even for free, videos, documents, papers, how to master it from A to Z. So here is a simple example telling, hey, I'm putting a threshold and office activity because that is a table that's our connector is getting the logs from Office 365. But my requirement here is detecting if there is an admin privileges into exchange server is starting to actually timber or disable any of these rules, the anti-phishing, attachment, DLB, audit, etc. And then starting to report it here. Next step, when you want this rule, this is scheduled rule or use case to run. I want to run it every day and look at the day before in order to define the delta. Do you want it to stop or add the threshold? Yes or no? Next step, you want it to create an incident if there is any matching happening on this rule, how to automate the response, and how to review the action. So that's a pretty simple steps how you will be able to create your own analytics rule or even how to enable or use any of the rules there into your Sentinel dashboard. Next step in terms of the phase, in terms of the hunting capability, which means that any stock analyst who would like to hunt, I'm running my use cases, but I would like to do a live stream hunting. And hence we're coming with a pure hunting capabilities into your Azure Sentinel. This hunting is not only relying on a specific rules or a query for KQL. It's actually extended for Jupyter notebooks. So SOC teams are using Jupyter into their SOC operations. They can import or upload or even create a Jupyter notebook on the fly out of the box into Azure Sentinel. It's a built in. It's using what we're calling the Azure ML workspace analytics and computing fully integrated with Azure Sentinel seamless experience. If you'd like to keep using and front sick analysis, what you are using into your SOC and leveraging and more powerful capability with more correlation and aggregation with events using Azure Sentinel. So how it looks like here in terms of hunting. If you go to your demo, you will be able to see your hunting environment. Here is a list again of out of the box hunting queries our security intelligence team providing to you. Bunch of them. A lot of hundreds of queries, you will be able to see it, showing which tactics, what are the data source, whatever it's a Microsoft, third party, correlated with our solution, a lot of them. But most importantly, at any time, let's create a live streaming hunt. I need something for a real, real time scenario. I don't want something like a kind of a scheduled. You will be able to create your own clone or clone it and add to live stream. Look what will happen to the live stream. A set of queries running with the background at real time doing detections and hunting and might create an incidence or even alerts for you as an analyst. And that's how we bundling the real time and the near real time and the scheduled rules. All of these aspects are available into your Azure Sentinel platform. All right. Next step, we're doing detections. We're doing forensic analysis. I need to investigate an incident. So how will be able to investigate an incident there? So based on the correlations that's happening across events, across alerts, across data, Sentinel will be able to get this data into our solution. And you will be able to go to any of the incidents into your Azure Sentinel incident blade. You will have a full interactive investigation dashboard that you can drill down in a one single pane of glass the entire super timeline activity, how we'll be able to connect the dots to get the entire kill chain and attack story. If you'd like to investigate every single entity which is got mapped as an entity for IP, host, machine, etc. event, you will be able to get more insights and analytics to this one. And hence, you'll be able to go into details, show exactly if there is any detonation and action has been taken. So if I go back to my Sentinel and I'm going to my incident plates, and quickly in a few minutes, I'm going to one of the incidents. For example, I'm seeing here there is a potential password spray and there is an incident showing. I need to investigate or get full details. Once I had the investigation button, it will go to the investigation graph screen. Look what will happen right now. 
So I am seeing there is enormous login and I have a timeline activity and there is an entities insights. Every time what I'm going to do is when you hover any entity, automatically Sentin is doing auto correlation for this one. I'm seeing there are five least privileges domain for this specific server. And then I'll be able even to explore every single entity or node and see if Sentinel is actually correlating the data automatically for us. Or I wanted to go to this specific user, which is having a password spray. Hey, there are five related alerts that's triggering from different security or other solution into your Sentinel SIM that's being triggered from a Microsoft, from my non Microsoft, it doesn't matter. But most importantly, I'm seeing that Darcy account, he logged into other five login hosts. And the beauty will be able to see it here, investigate and drill down. And that's a message telling that, hey, you will be able to get the full attack story, what exactly happening into this specific incident. And that's the power and capability of Sentinel. At any time, you can click on any entity and you can hit the entities error, which means you will be able to have a built in behavior analytics engine inside your Sentinel solution without the need to go and purchase as a solution as a case. So I can go to one of the machines or even a user here. You will have a full complete behavior analytics profiling for these entities under a built in module for UBA without the need to purchase or buy any third party UBA solution. Awesome. And then the automation piece, which is last but not least. It means that Sentinel comes with a SOAR capability, which is what we're calling the Playbooks or Azure Logic app. As you can see in the screen, you can build using a workflow very interactive and intuitive way. What you need to do, what are the main triggers? What are the main actions and conditions that you need to do it across any system based on the integration? And remember, again, we do have a lot of built in samples for you, either coming out of the box with Azure Sentinel or even going to the Azure Sentinel repo in GitHub, which is extended community for other sources that you can use as well. Here's a one slide we'll share with you as well there in terms of the pricing. Azure Center is coming with two model B as you go or a kind of capacitive bundles. It's up to your how many rates of data will be ingested. So Center is mainly running on the capacity of data. It's not counting you or charging you in a days. It's just what are the data and this data? Is it a free data based on a specific sources or non free data? That's really important to understand and to know apart from the flexibility of the model. And we show it to you right now, multiple modules and demos covering every single sections into Azure Center in terms of collecting the data. Definitely there are a lot of other functionalities and modules. You can see that here if I go back to my tenant, how I'll be able to see any kind of threat intelligence feeds coming from any threat intelligence platform. I will be able to control it. Yes. Can I create my own indicators? Yes. Can I see it into reports? 100%. But most importantly, once I'm getting these indicators or hashes from any source, Microsoft, non Microsoft, are we able to do detection and mapping to all of the data? That's out of the box. You have a ready custom analytics rule. We are calling threat intelligence rule. You will be able to use it here. Or you can build your own custom analytics rule for any kind of a data source ingested to Sentinel and mapping to your threat intelligence. We'll discuss about the behavior analytics. We discuss about the hunting. Here is a notebooks view for investigation. One of the interesting here is a playbox to create your own SOAR and automation. One of the interesting items in terms of watch list, at any time you can upload the CSV template as a watch list with IPs. Let's say you'd like to upload a malicious IPs or a domains to watch list in your investigation. And Sentinel, what is doing, once you uploaded this list as CSV, it's automatically created an alias or even a query table for you. So you can use this watch list table into your investigation or correlation with any kind of a data set. And that's a beauty of even importing such kind of a watch list item. We cover the demo. We cover the entire stages about Azure Sentinel. We explore it from A to Z, collection, detections, investigations, and respond and other capabilities. We show it to live demo covering every single module. And now in this few two minutes remaining to go, what are the actions that you can start from today? You can go on starting Azure Sentinel as a trial in your environment. You just need to have like a subscription for Microsoft and Azure. 
Azure Sentinel is for free for the first 30 days. Azure Sentinel giving you the option to extend for free data retention up to 90 days. Uh, once you enable it, you can create your own data sources. You can create your instance. And what we highly recommend to get start, actually, if you go to aka.ms slash Azure Sentinel and data hyphen eight, your free training modules, you will see that how to deploy Azure Sentinel and connect the data source step by step guide into this interactive session. You can use this one started right now and you will be familiar with how to deploy it Azure Sentinel environment and you can lever the capability and the power of having the next generation of a SIM platform into your organization. With that, uh, thanks so much for your time and hand over to you, Say. Thank you, Hisham. Uh, we have uh, received uh, many questions if you switch to the Q&A tab under the published uh, section. No problem. Sorry, I'm not able to see it because it's on the other screen and I'm putting the full screen. So a couple of questions here for this uh, few minutes. I'm going to the live event and Q&A here. Uh, OK, it's loading. Published at 9, I guess. All right, so a couple of questions here we're seeing. Uh, let me start from the beginning quickly. All right. Uh, okay, so here is a course. I think that's already uh, Hussein, he shared the link for it. Um, there is a question here is, can it process new NetFlow and IP fixes? Yes, 100%. So apart from the settings in Azure Sentinel, you will see settings, advanced options. You will be able to ingest the NetFlow. Am I speaking about the network if you are mentioning this one? and the prefix data in terms of from the network devices. Uh, another point is, uh, can it process encrypted data? Yes, it can be uh, process encrypted data with different algorithms, whatever was using in AES 512, 256, or et cetera. Uh, there is a clear documentation from Microsoft and Azure Sentinel about how just such kind of flows and the encryption model as well. Uh, another question here, in order to get the logs from servers, we need security center STD. Uh, it's not necessarily if we'd like to bring the logs from servers and I'm assuming the logs, it can be security logs, application system events or syslog or a SIF, whatever it's a Windows or non Windows Linux. So you don't need to have like a STD for it. You can simply follow the architecture, either install directly the agent from the log analytics agent for Sentinel and doing the configuration using the prerequisites, or you can create your own another virtual machine, which is acting as a proxy collector gateway that will bring the logs from the servers and send it directly to your Sentinel in case of an on-prem assets. Another question, is there a data connector for Fortinet? Yes, there is an out-of-the-box data connector for Fortinet. I showed you in the demo about an example, just to click it, do the configuration, and this Fortinet is not just the kind of Fortinet, you have the FortiGate, the FortiWeb, all of the flavors, I mean the distress of Fortinet as a vendor. How does the pricing work? I think we covered this point. So remember there are two models. There is pay as you go. And remember Sentinel is only charging you based on the capacity, not based on a daily basis or a monthly or subscription, which is a beauty. Whatever you are ingesting, you are using based on your requirements, this will be charged on. Or there is another model, which is we highly recommend, which is what we're calling the capacity reservation. It means a set of bundles, what you need to know, just know how to estimate and there is an estimator and calculator for Azure Central Public. Use it or reach out to one of the Microsoft team that can help you for doing the estimation. Tell them the size of the logs. Is it event per second or gigabytes? Azure Sentinel is sizing using the gigabytes per day. You can use one of the bundles. It's really important because it saves you a lot of money based on a bundle discounts. Um, can we disable malicious endpoint? Yes, uh, let's assume that to take an action to your endpoint, you do have your own EPP or EDR solution. Whatever using from Microsoft or from third party from other solution. So what you need to do, you just need to integrate with this EPP or EDR solution from endpoint, and you can build a playbook SOAR, which is you can isolate, quarantine, or take an action if your endpoint solution is allowing the integration with this part. From Microsoft, we're allowing other secured solutions in the list we're allowing as well. What are the thread intelligence feeds? Uh, so TI feeds, thread intelligence feeds, it is a concept of, if you are asking here, what is TI? Or I will assume you are asking about what are the data types or vendors of TI? It doesn't matter coming from any feeds, it's coming from Microsoft from a third party. Third party, you might have MISP, you might have Cypox, you might have Xforce, you might have Anomaly, thread intelligence, eyesight, built in-house. 
based on a taxi, based on an open protocol or a tip, it doesn't matter. Any kind of threat intelligence indicators coming from any vendor or built-in house, you will be able to ingest it using an out-of-the-box connector, which is calling threat intelligence connector into Sentinel. Uh, I think Hossein, he shared this one and here is a link. I guess with that, uh, hopefully we answered quickly all of the questions that has been published here. So back to you. Thank you for sharing your experience with our community today and we look forward to having you again in the future to share more uh, interesting topics in security and, and to help us understand more about the modern uh, technology that uh, is provided. I'm going to highlight again, um, let me start sharing my screen again. Just a couple of things I want to share with the community for them to continue the journey. Okay, just one second. That's not happening for some reason. All right. Uh, <laughs> all right. I just wanted to uh, quickly uh, encourage you to continue the journey and take the learn module that I uh, dropped the link in the chat. Um, there's also a survey that we're doing uh, to understand more the topics that you would like to see in the reactor sessions. Uh, so please uh, take a minute to uh, give us some feedback. Uh, on that, there is a session code which is 11747 uh, for today's session. Uh, use it when you are filling uh, the survey. The session is recorded and will be available uh, soon on our YouTube. So check out uh, and subscribe to our YouTube. And if you are not a part of our Meetup community on uh, meetup.com uh, for the Reactor Abu Dhabi, uh, then please uh, join us uh, and also spread the message, share the sessions with your network and friends. And um, thank you everyone for being part of our community and uh, goodbye.